Syracuse head coach Dino Babers. And, and coach, here we are, halfway point of the season. Your Orange are six and zero. Oh. What is that area fan base and alumni base like when Syracuse football is going good? I think we got a little taste of it the other night when we, uh, after our game with NC State, that uh, they stormed the field. You know, it's different. In our area, you stormed the field, and everybody wanted to give each other five on the football field with the players. <laughs> now everybody storms the field with their cameras, and they're, and they're filming the experience as they go. So I, I got to a safe spot so I could check out the student body and the players. But uh, it's a little, different, little bit different than the era that I was in. But it was still very exciting. Coach, and I mean this is a term of endearment. We've got, like, Dave Pash, Sean McDonough, Jim Gallero, College Game Day. We have so many Syracuse alum here at ESPN. Again, I mean this was – they're absolutely obnoxious when you guys are winning. <laughs> I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's good. I mean, if, you, if you're waiting for a Syracuse grad, just wait a minute, and they'll tell you they went to Syracuse. It's fun when you guys are winning because they're around here. But from, from five and seven a year ago to this, I know there's a long way to go, but what led to this turnaround? You know, I really give all the credit to the uh, captains. I just think that this team has been entirely different from the start of spring ball. The spring ball was extremely physical. And then they carried it over in the summer times with their, their own workouts and, uh, and the, uh, the amount of accountability that they held each other to. And then it carried over into the one-a-days in August, and you just knew that we were going to have something good, even though, you know, the, the outside noise or the noise from the outside wasn't that positive. I just felt like these guys had too much stuff going in internally mm -hmm. not to be good. And, uh, you know, God bless things have worked out. Yeah, it's been a fun watch. And in 2018, we know you were 9-3, and three, then just 11 wins in the next three years. Now you're on the way up again. How important – was the patience to allow you and this program to get to where you think it can go? You know what, the, the, the patience that not only the community, the student body, but, uh, you know, the athletic department along with the, all the way up to the chancellor, they're extremely patient. And we had to plant a seed and we had to fertilize the ground and we had to water it and let God do the work with the sun to let it grow. And, and it took some time. I really do believe that this time around, that uh, I think those dark days are behind us and the, and the days in the light are the ones that are in front of us. During those dark days when you were trying to plant those seeds and water them, what did you learn about yourself as a coach? Uh, I think the big thing is, like I tell my young men, I said belief without evidence is the definition of what we call faith. And uh, we had given them a little evidence, which, which probably left, left us around here for a little while. But just the faith in everybody in the community and the student body and, and the athletic department along with the administration to uh, let us do it one more time. Let us rebuild it again. And I really think that there's a foundation that can be built upon based off of what we've got going on right now. And you mentioned that foundation. Saturday, this past Saturday, the school honored three of its greatest players during halftime. Running backs Jim Brown, Heisman Trophy winner Ernie Davis, and Floyd Little. Each of them wore that famed number 44. They were enshrined in the ring of honor. Your current back is taking that foundation and running with it. John Tucker, he's been remarkable in the early part of his Syracuse career. What makes him so special? You know, he's just different. He reminds me of uh, our, our young man, Andre Sisco, that, that left and's already gone to the NFL. He, uh, he's very, very focused. Uh, his, his, his mom gives him balance. His dad gives him drive. And he just knows exactly what he wants to do. And when a lot of other guys are going out and doing other things, he's in the weight room getting bigger, stronger, faster. And uh, I think you're seeing all of that on the football field. He's a he's a old sophomore, as they would say, with the COVID <laughs> years. But something tells me that he may not be around here much longer. I was just going to say, he's one of those older sophomores. It's frightening that he even has the sophomore attached to his name. And speaking of attached, Coach, here you are tucked into the upper right corner of the country in Syracuse. I think it's cold nine months of the year there. But you actually played your college ball at Hawaii. You started your coaching career there. Syracuse clearly isn't Hawaii, but what about Hawaii? In that culture, did you always want with you during your coaching career, including now? You know, I think the big thing is I was born in the islands. Uh, I moved away when I was extremely young, and that was the reason why I wanted to go back and go to school there. But, you know, that aloha spirit is what I learned there. And they just, you know, they have a certain love for not only the land but for the people. And 
I wanted to carry that ohana and that spirit, that La Familia, the love of the family wherever I went. And that's something that I've been trying to instill, not only with our coaching staff, with our coaches, but also with our players. We'd love for those guys to be uh, better fathers, better sons, better husbands. Don't be like us. Be better than us and never strive and never settle. Don't be average. Be way above that. Yeah, and I know that you've talked at length about your coach at Hawaii, the late, great Dick Tomey, and the impact that he had on your career. He had one of his sayings that you talk about where he said, quote, try less harder. I did like a dog head tilt when I was looking at that. What, what does try less harder mean? You know, the best example I can give you is this sport that I'm, I'm really not very good at is golf. <laughs> you know, the, the harder you try to move the ball, the shorter the distance the ball actually moves. And then when you don't care about moving the ball a long distance and you just swing nice, easy, uh, the ball travels a great distance. I think the, the, the saying, and the first time he took, coach told me, told me the saying, I didn't understand it at all at my age. But now I understand it as you need to relax so that your God-given ability can shine through. And it's a great message when you really peel back the simplicity of it. And you mentioned after the win on Saturday, we had some fun with this with you, that Syracuse bowl eligible for the first time since 2018. Up next is Clemson. You beat them in 2017. What will it take to get that done this year? You know, first of all, we're going to have to play our best game. Uh, you know, those guys got five stars coming out of their socks. And, you know, we, we've got a bunch of guys that are trying to get better all the time. We have players. There's no doubt about it. They have more. There's that most likely that's a very true statement. But we're going down to play at their place. It's a hostile place. I think they've won 37 in a row, which means a lot of staffs, a lot of players have gone down there and not had the success that they that they wanted to have. And all I want our guys to do is relax and go down there and, and enjoy the moment. We're going to have to play our best football. We're going to have to play an extremely clear game, clean game, and, and maybe need a little help from them. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.